All right, welcome back to another video. As you can see, I've got the Z in the garage behind me. Uh, so that means we're moving on to switching over to engine bay prep. So I'm gonna show you some of the things that I'm gonna be trying to do in this video. Um, I've got the wire harnesses laid out here in front of me, as well as the ECU and the uh, upgraded chip. So uh, this chip is from Z1. It's gonna have all the programming I need for the 500 horsepower kit and for converting my non-turbo chassis into a turbo two chassis. Uh, here you can see my, I'm sorry, twin turbo chassis. Here you can see my ECU, it's, you know, it's had an upgrade done to it before. Uh, it looks like uh, they did some kind of, uh, I think it was like a stage one in a upgrade. So it already had the sockets in it. So all I had to do was, I didn't have to send off my ECU. All I had to do was get the chip. I'm gonna throw the chip in there. Um, Another thing we'll do too is run this as the engine main wiring harness. This is brand new from Z1. And then I also have, uh, I believe this is like a, maybe an alternator harness or something. I do know it taps into uh, the old pressure sensor and a few other things. These uh, two black connectors, they plug in uh, back here and then kind of run this way and attach to the motor on this side. So. Go ahead and install that harness as well as um, I'll do some, run some more fuel lines. Got a brand new fuel line right there. All right, so I got my AC lines right here. Uh, I know I said I wasn't going to uh, run AC lines, but I decided to go ahead and clean them up and reinstall them. So when I do find a condenser, that'll be a little easier to do. So plan here is I cleaned them up pretty good. Uh, most of this foam is intact and in, in pretty good shape, but I'm still going to add some additional shielding uh, where these AC lines run close to the turbo. Now, I think from the factory, this piece right here has uh, some kind of like plastic uh, piece on it, which honestly, I don't think does much for heat shielding. It just kind of makes it look a little bit better. I'm going to add this stuff. Um, I'm going to run it down over there. I'm probably going to have to buy another pack. It's this uh, titanium LT, or yeah, whatever that says, titanium sleeve. I'm going to run it basically from here to here and then I'll do another piece from like here to here and then I know that there's a piece that runs along the bottom the low side hose which I think might be this hose uh, I'm probably going to add some DEI gold reflected gold tape to that um, just to kind of wrap it up and then in, in some of the spots where it's this is a little bit rough but I know it's not anywhere close to the turbo I'll probably just wrap it with electrical tape just to clean it up make it look a little bit nicer uh, and then on top of that, I'm going to run this some of this heat heat screen stuff. Uh, this is good for, I think it's uh, 2,000 degrees radiant heat. I'm going to run this stuff. Um, I'm going to run this stuff uh, on the sides where I know the turbo is going to be really close to the wall. Uh, same thing with over there. Maybe put a couple pieces down there. Nothing too crazy, but uh, yep. That'll be some of the things that I do on the engine bay to wrap it up to get it ready for the motor to go in.
right, so quick update. Um, I was able to run the wire harness, and as you can see, uh, I've got it routed here. And for anybody doing this, um, this is how I ended up routing the brackets. I did struggle with um, I did struggle with this bracket, so it's like danger close to this heating shield, and it seemed like the only way to keep this wire from rubbing down here on the metal or rubbing down here on the metal was to rig it up this way. Uh, it's it's good now. It's nice and solid. It's not moving. Um, and I think it's going to be good. It's not going to scratch or anything. It's not going to wear through any wires. It's pretty well insulated and protected and mounted right there. I will say that the this wire harness that I have, I don't think it's a Nissan OEM. It may be like the uh, Z1 Reproductions. And these pieces, not only were they like not sufficient, but um, they were in the wrong place. So what I ended up doing was cutting some of the ones off my old harness to make sure I had like a full 360 degrees protection because the ones that came on the harness were just like uh, small pieces like that. So got those in there. That took way longer than I thought it would. Um, I replaced those uh, fuel hoses with brand new fuel hoses and I put those little shields on there, little heat shields on there. Um, and then I tried putting in the, the AC pipe. So I did manage to get some ran. And then when I went to go run this one, I put this one in place. And I noticed, I started to think about something. I know that the intercooler piping is gonna go right here. Um, and so I took a look at some photos of some turbo cars and sure enough, you know, I can't run these AC, the non-turbo AC lines with the intercooler piping, it's gonna get in the way. So I think what I'm gonna do for now is I'm going to, uh, I'm gonna put the AC line install and pause. I'm gonna throw all that stuff back in a box and then I will probably look at doing flexible hoses, flexible AC lines, and then a custom condenser or something later on in the future. But for right now, not too worried about it. Next thing on the agenda I'm just gonna, is I'm going to square away the, um, this is the power steering lines. And this is an interesting one. If anybody who is a viewer knows, like the power steering line goes, it's down here, right? It goes up, sorry, it's right there, it goes up, it goes down, it goes down into the front of the engine, I'm sorry, into the uh, front of the car, like in front of the radiator, it goes across, and then it comes back up, and I think typically on a car, this is where I'm used to seeing a, like a cooler of some sort, or power steering cooler, uh, which this one maybe just by running that line all the way over there is what they do to cool it or something it, to me It doesn't make any sense. Like I don't understand why the line wouldn't just go from here Straight down, you know straight down across one of these lines and go straight into there The problem that I think that this kind of gives me right now is that I I think my Intercooler piping is probably gonna run right there. So I don't know uh, If you've done a conversion like this before tell me what you think uh can I just run a straight line from, you know, here straight to over there? Can I do that? I mean, I think I can. I think I could probably take disconnect this and just add a longer hose to it and then just run it right there. You know, is that going to be a problem or do I need to give it some space to cool off or something? Is that what that's meant to do? You know, is that the whole purpose of this going up towards the front is to cool it off? And then I'm also going to go ahead and run... I'm gonna for now I'm just gonna install the power steering like it is factory and then when we go to install the intercoolers if it gets in the way then I'll figure out what to do then and then I'm also gonna put the wire harness that goes right here inside this um, there's a wire harness that plugs and it runs along this firewall and goes everywhere I'm gonna do that because that's one of the things I need to finalize and then I also need to take a look at excuse the mess also need to take a look at uh, maybe finishing up the whole thing that I got going on behind these uh, covers. Oh, stuck on there. Yeah, take it off and figure out how I'm going to make that black again behind there. So I'll work on that. And I think, yeah, I'll probably put a fuel filter in right there, run the new fuel line, and then just do one last final check and see is there any last minute things I need to do. Uh, before I can drop that engine in. So here we go.
right, so a uh, quick update. I think this will be the end of this video. I got as much done as I can think of to do. The problem with projects like this has been so long, I don't remember where everything goes, and I didn't really take really good photos. So I like to route the wires as close to OEM as possible, and um, I can't really remember where these things go. So I'm gonna do a little bit of research, but I think I got it into a spot where I can put the motor in, and none of this stuff is gonna be in my way, nor will it be harder to do once the motor's in. I think all the stuff that I'm, I'm trying to do would, will be fairly easy. So uh, real quick, a couple things that I did was, uh, in the time lapse, you saw me pull these things off. I ran this rubber hose, I ran the, I covered this in a new uh, electrical tape, and then I put the seal in and threw these back on. Plan for these is, I'm going to, you know, once the motor's in there later on, I'm going to pull these off, clean the windshield real good because there's some uh, crap on there. I'm gonna make sure it gets rain X. And then I'm also going to underneath these things, right? So you can see the red. And my plan is to take some black uh, silicone sheeting and like, you know, two, three mil stick and stick it underneath here. And that's the way, I think it comes from factory on most cars. I'm not sure why it's on not on this car. It could be because somebody took it apart. But normally you'll have like a vinyl or plastic sheet under here so that way, you know, that rain and crud and stuff is just not falling straight down in there. It's kind of like draining off a little bit. So I'm going to buy some of that stuff, cut it to size, put it in there. Um, I did notice that this is an aftermarket uh, fiberglass piece. So the fitment on it is kind of wonky and you can actually see where the previous owner had to screw a hole to like put a second hole to make it fit, which I think is kind of funny. Uh, so I think I can make it fit a little bit better by uh, just removing some material from the back. So I'll work on making that fit better. And I'm also going to um, add some of this, this right here. So I'll, I'll, I'll sand it down, I'll paint it. I may add the screen that's on this side on this side so they match. And then there's this like rubber molding here. It was on here, it fell off. Um, I found a pretty good replacement on Amazon. Uh, this stuff right here and I, you know, I don't think this 3M tape is going to hold it. So what I'll probably do is I'll probably put some epoxy on it on the backside. But yeah, I'll just do like that. I got like a 10 foot roll of it or something. So I'll just stick it on there like that. And that'll be a replacement for that. You could probably get the OEM stuff maybe. But I mean, this was like 10, 12 bucks and it's supposed to be pretty high quality rubber. So we'll see how that works. So, you know, I did all that. I routed the wires down this way, routed them through here, plugged them up there. Uh, the math sensor wire down that way and then i just kind of velcroed this stuff out of the way so that way this is like a, a loop velcro that i have laying around just to hold it out of the way so when i drop the motor in it's not in the way um what else did i do i think that was pretty much it i did i did put a little bit more heat shielding on there all right so that's everything for this video if you like this type of content make sure you subscribe i think i was looking at my youtube stats and like 90 percent of the people who watch these videos are not even subscribed so i don't know what you're doing but you should subscribe and then um i'm gonna try to get this motor in so i think the next video will be me uh, finalizing a few things on the motor i finally got all the silicone hoses and everything i need uh, and then i will be putting this motor into the car for sure within the next couple days so oz will be here to join me for that so uh, make sure you stay tuned so you can see that and then, uh, you know, cross our fingers. Hopefully this thing runs first go. We'll see. See you next time.